Hey everyone, it's Sean. As many of you know, there was an awesome week at Microsoft's Build Conference in Seattle last week. Uh, there were a lot of HoloLens and Mixed Reality announcements, and I thought it'd be fun to have a group of some of the key HoloLens developers in the community talk about their takeaways from the conference, uh, what were uh, disappointing, what was fun, what was good, and kind of a little hint at what's coming in the future. So without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our guests and dive right in. Hi, I'm Gareth James. I'm Christopher Steven. Cameron Vetter. Justin McCullough. So, being the last day of build, we've had some mixed reality news. What is your overall feeling of uh, build and mixed reality? It's been a good story to me of where they are, where everything's coming together. The vision AI, the convergence of all the different stuff together is what we're needing. Um, there's still a little way to go. Quite disappointed in not getting the headsets, yeah. but I don't think they're ready yet. I think it was great to get a lot of insights on how the teams are working together and how little um, the uh, other Microsofties really are working with these teams. Mm. Uh, they don't even know what's going on, so they can't ask our, our, answer our questions, you know. Mm. And I, I really think uh, coming here and and letting our voice be heard from the Hollow Developers Group and everything uh, uh, is really going to help a lot because uh, if we can get Microsoft on our side with our community, uh, I think it's going to grow and, and we're going to be able to learn a lot more together. Fantastic. The story did come together, as you pointed out, a little bit more. A lot of the stuff that's been out there but really hasn't all gelled, gelled yeah. but the problem is there wasn't a lot of new information. We don't have a good uh, vision for what's next and where Hollow Lens goes next. We just have a, a better picture of how the occluded headsets are going to fit into that picture and now we have a timeline, at least the desired timeline for that. I did find the, the controllers to be interesting that they showed during the keynote and I'm curious, they showed them with the occluded headsets, but I'm curious to see, are we going to be able to use that with the HoloLens? So I think there might be some good applications for I think that. That's a use case scenario. Yeah, there's always going to be a way around it. We will be able to do it. Um, one of the advantages of these things is that it is hands-free. If you look at the piece of the crop, the, the, the advantage of an engineer not having something in his hands means he's still got it and can actually right. get on with the work. But yeah, you've also got the use case of, well, I mean, I do want a, a more accurate control and things like that. So I think, yeah, there's, there's, there's cases to hold. I think one of the big things for me is as soon as you put this on somebody who has never used one before, <laughs> and you put a hologram in front of them, the first thing they want to do is reach out and yeah. touch it and, and manipulate it somehow. You don't and need to train people how to use their hands. <laughs> <laughs> but right now with gestures, it's not really, there's not really a way of doing it, whereas at least with controllers, you'd be able to reach out, hit the trigger, and, and then yeah. manipulate it in a natural way. So I, I do think that there's definitely use of where it would be handy to have. Yeah. I'm worried about uh, it becoming more gamified by doing that. So what would you say is needed? More uh, resolution and precision around gestures, hand gestures? I, I, th I believe it's uh, the preci precision around uh, joint. Uh, so you can start tracking individual fingers somebody that does this is okay to be somebody that does this maybe you know <laughs> so I, I went to yeah the emotions already got it covered I went to a session on uh, cognitive services and the guy from the gesture recognition team was actually there and I asked him about using it with HoloLens he said initially when they developed it they actually targeted the, the HoloLens and they've currently put that on hold but they actually have an integration working already with the HoloLens. And what they what they demonstrated was actually getting the full finger, each finger individually, and seeing the joints. So they're they're like this close to it. The second half of that problem is you can only see within this box. You know? So that takes boxing games out, you know, that takes a lot of full motion games out of the big right. Are you talking uh, think, about for the controllers now or for gestures? Or both? Well for both, for both yeah. Um, I, I, what I'd like to see is them embrace this idea of IoT and really embrace the idea along with it of wearables. We should be able to, to have different wearables on our body to play different games and, and mix and match on them, boxing gloves and all different kinds of things and make this, if we're going to gamify it, then gamify it right. I don't think it's a matter of if they're going to gamify it. I mean, the $300, $400 headsets are going to guarantee it. 
because yeah. <coughs> that's their only consumer play at this point. Yeah. Is would yeah. you say that's the biggest news uh, that came out of Build with mixed reality? Is the, the, the price points? The price points? Um, well, yeah, I, I mean it's been rumored. It, it's nice to have it. But. So, uh, so with the price point at two ninety nine. What's gonna? What do you guys predict is gonna be the impact on the market? Do you predict mass adoption? Do you predict selling out at Christmas? Uh, everyone's gonna want one. <laughs> no, to be honest, you actually, when you feel one of them, it yeah. feels like a two ninety nine device. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually worried it's gonna have the network effect. Mm. Oh really? Okay. Mm. I think I think by which is a negative effect. Yes. Yeah. I think by lowering it and creating a Fisher Price toy, then uh, you're going to. You're going to have that same effect, and then virtual reality is going to become just, you know, a toy. A toy. Well, hopefully, we avoided that by getting the vibe and the rift into the market first. Mm -hmm. And now that they have some good support, people will see that these are, you know, the, these headsets are, are, are nice devices, and these are kind yeah. of the the Intel yeah. processor on the chip versus the NVIDIA processor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what we're looking at here. Yeah. I, I do worry that it's going to devalue the HoloLens too because of the way they're attaching the two together with the Windows holographic platform, or what's what's it called this week? Mixed reality, yeah. mixed reality platform. So I, I, I worry that they're going to devalue that and then so, the so enterprise story gets a little bit more difficult. Yeah, so right now, any app that you make for the HoloLens, you can put into the Acer headset or the other mixed reality immersive headsets, right? Right. Yeah. right. So when you say devalued, does that mean that the experience is not going to be as good or as rich? Well, I'm worried that uh, people will get their first experience with these apps with those headsets and think, oh, this isn't very good, mm. it's kind of blurry on the edges, mm. and mm. It's, it's a little bit choppy. Either that or it's good enough, why should I suddenly well, fork that out something that's, yeah. that's exponentially I think, I think more expensive. as long as uh, Microsoft maintains the idea that they control the idea of the flagship, mm -hmm. that they're producing the flagship, as long as that is maintained, they'll be able to maintain their value. Mm. But as soon as someone comes out with a new flagship, I think that's when they'll lose control. Of so, so if you guys could have been on a steering committee to tell Microsoft, this is what we wanted the immersive headset to look like and the features, what would that mythical headset would have looked like? I'd like to see a more modular system. Uh, so you, you have things like the HoloLens, but then you can uh, put attachments on it to give it blinders so it's opaque rather than, uh, uh, you know, and then things like, well, you can go ahead and do it tethered if you want to. If you want to connect a USB, uh, three and an AC. You've got the plugins. You can do it, or it can run on the device, mm -hmm. and and maybe additional battery ports. You know, so you can go ahead and put more interchangeable batteries. Oh well, yeah, uh, that's yeah. Because why can't right. we just pull that off? Pull that off, uh -huh. and right. yeah, the majority in there is battery. Yeah. you should be able to keep it going just by swapping. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. So what were you hoping for at Build this year that you didn't see, either with the Hololens or mixed reality in general? Didn't see you. Didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we all have a have a consensus on one big one, and that's advanced training. Mm. Advanced yep. training. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The the sessions were not there for mm. the mixed reality story mm. whatsoever. So going beyond the tutorials, you can find yeah. online and kind of diving deep. We didn't actually learn anything new. Oh really? That's surprising. Yeah. yeah. That's really. Yeah, that that awesome. was the only thing we learned new is we saw some of the the things that are being added into the SDK for the occluded headsets. But honestly, that's in a GitHub branch already, so yeah. we could have found that on our own. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I think I think the problem is they started by selling this to enterprises and businesses and 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 enterprise developers, line of business developers, and by doing that, there's a certain level of expectation of uh, training of. You know, we're not game developers, we're developing with Unity, we're developing with tools we may have never used before, but it's going to be a hard sell to convince our businesses and, and our, our, our workplaces to send us to a gaming development conference mm -hmm. to learn the techniques we need. To be honest, that was a big kick in the teeth. If they turn around and gave golden tickets for the headsets <laughs> to the gamers, but not us. Kind of, kind yeah. of a pain point there, right? Yeah. Well, I think that tells you a lot about their intended market audience right. for these occluded headsets, right? Yeah. It's not us. No. It's it's the game developers. They're trying to hit the, the lower end of that market that's not covered already by Vive and Oculus. Yeah. 
So, if so, would you say that if anyone's interested in developing games, pick up the Mixed Reality Immersive Headset? And if you're wanting to do stuff for business or commercial, then pick up the HoloLens? I think that that's going to come, that there is going to be a cheaper version of the HoloLens that is eventually the, is opaque, they can see through. Okay. So to be honest, it's a different kind of user experience. And the fact of it not being tailored as well, it's a different style of game. So, so is it good that it's all one ecosystem, or do you think it should be fair? No. I, I do think it's good, because I think not every developer right now that may want to begin on it can afford to buy a $3,000 HoloLens yeah. to try out and <coughs> test out. So for them to have a $299 device where they can buy an app for it, and know that it works on the platform, I think is going to be helpful there. But I do think that that the game market is kind of wet. So, so, so having experienced the 299 <clears throat> headset, what will that experience be like for people? What, what can they do in it? How, will they have fun? Will they? Will it be boring? Do you guys have any sort of sense of what users can, viewers can expect the to The critical experience? one around that is basically what it's going to be. It's how many people have a PC in their living room? Probably most of us, but <laughs> we're rare. That's the thing, if, if you're going to that consumer mm -hmm. side of things, mm -hmm. they've got to have the game console to plug it into. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so a if you could plug it into an Xbox, for example? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got to have something there. And they are still faking it quite a lot, as far as I'm concerned. On You need something with a decent graphics card. Mm -hmm. That is... I, I think if they solve that problem, I don't think it's the necess necessity of having it. A computer in the living room because right now you've got people who are buying the Rift and the Vive who have to connect it to a PC and they're playing it, you know, in the living room anyway. They're moving their computers in there, so I don't think that's necessarily a necessity. And I do think that for the PCs at Christmas, uh, at this price point, you will get people who are, are looking to get their kid into VR at this, you know, this cheaper price point. Um, Let's face it, I think it's a guaranteed they're going to be selling out by Christmas. <laughs> That's so what I worry about though is everyone will be really disappointed because yeah, the lack of software, as late as they're doing these to the developers, right. it's, it's looking like August at the earliest, yeah. and will they make that article. date? And that's the thing, the games companies that are already developing the Vive and the Oculus, they need to be talking with those guys and have it so day one, right. the whole solution is available. They, right. they need to have a library yeah. out there. If There's a going decent to sell existing the library the, there now. Lenovo has already said that they plan on releasing in August to consumers. So at that point, if they're getting them to consumers at the same point, developers are getting dev kits. There's not going to be. Mm. I was talking to some of the MR team and they were telling us that the device we demoed in, in the academy was different from what's in the dev kit. Like, a lot different. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's, that's surprising. So, um, Did they say how so? No. That gives me a little bit of hope. Yes. Is that, yeah, the, yeah, it could be good. good right? There's no <laughs> control between how close it is to your yeah. face. I, I mean, I could, I, use, I could use the Acer because my IPD was too high. Yeah, so I had that. So it was blurry. And yeah. it worked fine for me. Yeah. And we noticed that I had a lower IPD <laughs> than you did. Yeah. So yeah. it seems like it just hits a certain range of people yeah. right now. Yeah. That's, if they put it out like that, that's going to be 40% yes, exactly returns, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So they're, they're really going to have to sprint to get it out to developers by August. Right? It's going to be, yeah. Uh, with these headsets emerging, with the HoloLens kind of, you know, being uh, unchanged for since uh, 2015. And hearing some rumors that you have, where do you see the future of Windows Mixed Reality going? I, I'm hoping within five years we get light enough that it's something you can wear all day long. And it's. Would, would and you wear the, this out in public 24 7? No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, and We've got to be even, careful when that happens though. Look what happens to the glass. <laughs> that's one reason, but the other reason is it's just not comfortable. The battery only lasts a few hours. It's not realistic to wear this yeah. all day long. But I think if it gets lighter, gets to be a little bit less bulky, we, we should have something that actually kills the phone. I, I think mm. Alex That's a powerful statement right there. put that out there yeah. this last week. I think he jumped the gun by a couple of years on that statement, but I think he is right. I think this is what replaces the mobile phone that we all carry around.
it's it's the real wearable that will carry there's enough reward from one of those right. that you'll pull up with it right. the, the so this future is coming you're predicting that this future is coming and it's oh, not yeah. it's 20 years away it's more like five years away yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, I, that's I, I predict I'll, this being a tremendous skill set augmenter for uh for getting people to learn trades and, and stuff like that that uh, they may not you know instead of going and becoming a, a, an apprentice carpenter for four years before you become a journeyman or something. Now you can go through hands-on training, learn this stuff quicker, and so I'm seeing it as more of education, enterprise, and uh, manufacturing wow. factory. Wow. Safety for me is the biggest thing on these. Mm. It's, we're gonna be able to create safer environments for yep. everybody in the wow. workplace. And with uh, enterprises will jump. Mm. That's with, awesome. With the uptake in automation, um, I believe that this is going to allow us to uh, augment people's jobs while being able to still increase their salaries and, and move them into more higher paid jobs uh, within factory settings as well. So knowing that this massive transformation is just around the corner and we're just at the beginnings of it taking off, it's kind of a no-brainer to be in this space right now, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think so. At least yeah. be in the 10% no. At least know, which, know enough to, to know to look for it. Oh. Well, that's exciting. Any final thoughts? No? All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining in. And this was our uh, Build 2017 Mixed Reality Table Talk. We'll see you next time.